Yeah, welcome to the old classic car channel. Now this video is just going to be a quick update on progress so far on the 1937 Talbot 3 litre. Uh, if you've not seen the previous videos about this car, um, it's not been on the road since about 1976. Um, the engine does spin over but more than that I don't really know at this moment. So the plan is to go through a series of steps just to check the engine over and make sure that it's in a state where a test firing up can be actually attempted. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is see if there's any signs of oil pressure. There is oil in the engine, um, but if there's no sign of oil pressure on the gauge, then any thought of trying to fire up the engine anytime soon will probably out of the window. So, first thing to do, hang the battery on, spin her over with the plugs out, and just see if there's any oil pressure registering on the gauge. Uh, if there is, then great, and we can carry on to the next steps. Okay, ignition on. And let's see if there's any oil pressure showing on the gauge, which is the top of the four in this cluster here. Oh, it's showing just over 30, which on a slow turnover I think is pretty good. So that's that's that ticked off the list. Jolly good. Okay, that's good. It's showing oil pressure then. Here's the takeoff on the side of the block. So it's got quite a long route to come up. It comes up here, round here, there, and in in through the bulkhead. And up to the gauge, so considering the oil's fairly old, th th there is some body to the oil, but it is old. Um, that's not too bad at all. So I think I will go. Let's just take the light. I think the next thing to do is sort out those plug leads, which I took off a little while back. Here they are. So we can get a bit more light on the subject. Yeah. So. They all sit in this Bakelite housing here, and the leads come out to the relevant cylinders. It keeps it all neat and tidy. So I think we'll make a start on that. I won't bother filming that because uh, I did that for the Morris 8, and you can have too much of a good thing. So I'll uh, crack on with that and see how long that takes. Okay, well we're back in the garage today and I think today's excitement will revolve around giving the Talbot a quick oil change. I've got a job lot of straight 30 monograde classic type oil ready for it. So I think if we just go down here and weigh up the job. Here we have the Tacalamit oil filter arrangement for the Talbot. Now, that is a recleanable element in there. There's a drain down at the bottom of the housing, which I think you can probably just about see. So uh, I think we'll jack the front end up, drain off the sump. There's quite a quite a lot of oil in there. And we'll drain off the filter housing, take that out, try and clean it up in some old petrol and see where we go from there. That's the plan anyway. Well, let's see, let's see how that goes. Have a look, it's all fairly greasy under here, but that's helped to preserve it. Uh, the front suspension is independent on these. This is a big spring that goes across here. So we'll jack it up under the centre and then put the stands at either end. And that should support it pretty well so they can actually drain the oil off. Okay. 
I may need to put a piece of wood, a much bigger plank that goes and supports under the wheel end of the spring and lift it up that way so that we're not lifting it up on the suspension. Okay, we'll take two. We've now got a plank of wood across supporting either wheel end. Just a small piece in the middle there. Let's see if this works. It may. I don't know if this is quite sturdy enough. This, I think, I think it's bending a bit. This doesn't work. I'll just have to jack it up at either end and uh, the wheel end. It'd be nice if we could jack it up in one go, but I think it's just gonna bend. I don't think that this piece of wood is just bending fairly spectacularly. Oh, let's see if this works. That's a bit more promising. have to be supported under the spring if I put the, uh, the axle stand under the chassis it'll just the wheel will just drop to the floor again let's see if I can get a stand in Stand will fit in there. Just Let's see how we go. Is it going to drop too far? That'll do. Right, well, it's up in the air sufficiently. Wheels off the ground. That's off the ground sufficiently, I think, to train the oil out. Let's go have a look underneath, see what it looks like underneath. The surface rust around under this front balance. It could be a lot worse. The front chassis is actually really lightweight. There's not a great deal here, there's some bracing here. It's not the, the sturdiest of chassis I've ever seen, I must admit. And the further back we go, the greasier it becomes. But that's not that's not a bad thing. Let's see what we've got. So yeah, the spring is all very greasy. And there is the sump plug, fairly small. Have a quick look at the rest of the underside. There's a little drip from somewhere because I opened the drain taps on the block just to make sure because it seemed to have some fresh water in it, which is clean, but fresh water isn't great. So it's now that I've checked the front up, I think it's just dripping the last dregs of the water out of the, uh, the drain tap near the back end of the block. So that's okay. Overall, there's some surface rust, but nothing, nothing too appalling from what I can see. But yeah, it's a fairly large sump. Um, I think there's around about seven liters or so of oil in there. So I have to make sure I've got two uh, dishes to drain into. So I think I'll go and find something to fit on there. Quarter-inch Whitworth open spanner now. <coughs> Two containers at the ready for the imminent downpour, hopefully. 
be more concerned if nothing comes out, to be honest, because it's showing something on the dipstick. So you'd hope there'd be something in there, but you never quite know. On Big Dodge, when I first started getting that ready to run, it showed something on the dipstick, but when I actually took the sump off, I had to actually spoon it out, it was that thick and loopy. So uh, I'm not expecting miracles with whatever comes out of here, to be honest. Let's see what we get. Oh, there we go. That's one sump plug. I'll just clean up the edges a bit. It's reasonable condition, but I will tidy it up a bit. Let's see what we get coming out of here then. Fairly black, fairly old and smelly. Well, let's drain this off. I've already slackened it off. Let's see if I can... I've put a tin underneath, I'm not quite sure where it's going to go because it'll probably forgive the use of an adjustable yeah. it wasn't tight, fortunately so it can drain off now I'm just going to see if I can find something to fit on the top here. Okay, seven sixteenths of Gordon tools. Spanner. Let's try that. This is just in the wrong position, as it always. do I'll go and find a rag still draining out of the, the, uh, the housing so that can be left to its own devices and I'll clean out it's not, it doesn't look too bad in there actually but I'll once that's finished draining I'll clean out the, the rest of the housing and just prod something up the hole there which is part of the, the oil feed In the meantime, I'll go and get some old petrol and a container, the one that I didn't use for the oil, because that's not going to fill up one container. I'll go and get some old petrol and I'll give this a soak. Because I don't think that would be the best oil filter. I don't think it would certainly do a great job, so I think we need to clean that up as best as possible. Clean the inside of the housing and then reassemble it all. Right, let's get some old petrol. Now, this smelly old stuff is probably what came out of the Morris here when I drained the tank. So, even though it stinks, it's actually really useful for cleaning stuff. filter element and see what we can do. If it 
comes up something like and it'll do the job for the time being and, uh, I suppose you can get new ones of these, so it's a case of cleaning up and making best of what you've got. So I think I'll crack on with this, which is probably not that exciting viewing. So uh, I'll do a bit of this, I'm going to have something to eat, and then carry on and see where we're, where we're up to. And uh, Like I say, I'll just give this a scrub as best I can and let it dry. Uh, the old petrol should evaporate fairly quickly and then you can see what state that's in and then go and clean these housings that are here um, and think I'll put some fresh oil in like I say I've got some straight 30 monograde to go in so that should do the job um, I'll just have to see if we can make something usable out of this old filter okay well that appears to be pretty much drained out now So I can clean that out, finish cleaning the housing that goes on the top, the element that goes inside, and then put it all back together. Just been having a quick look again in the old handbook that I found for it, and it does say that these um, felt oil filters can be cleaned and reused several times before replacing them. So I think as the housing wasn't too clagged up inside, uh, I'll just take the risk of reusing this one, cleaning it up and reusing it for now, but I will look out a fresh filter, I think, I think that'll probably be favourite. Um, but I'll go and fish this one out and dry it off. I think as long as it's clean and there's no muck on the inside of the filter where the spring is, um, I think we should be alright, at least for a test run with fresh oil. Like I say, I'll just look out a replacement, I think, and uh, see if I can find, or maybe a modern equivalent, one of the mo more modern style filters that just happens to fit in the housing. Uh, if anyone's got any advice on filters that are usable in the 3 litre or some, yeah, Talbot or Sunbeam Talbot 3 litre engine, please let me know. If you found like a more modern equivalent part number to look out for, then that'd be quite handy, thanks. So, uh, yeah, I'll go and fish this out, I'm going to clean it up, and it can start drying off a bit. And uh, in the meantime, I'll clean these parts of the housing and uh, get those looking tickety-boo and ready to fit back on. Yeah, I've just cleaned it up a little bit, the covering, the uh, the top of the oil filter housing. We've got Tecalumet oil cleaners of Brentford, made in England. Got a part number, element number 2075, is that a GF or OF? 2075 clean every 2000 miles renew every 10,000 miles so uh, while I'm a little reluctant to use the old one I think it'll do for the purposes of test running and if it runs okay I'll replace it with a, a new replacement once I find one but yeah I think I'll just give that a quick wipe over with a drop of black just to uh, bring it back to life a little bit. Now I've made a note of the numbers and that should be good to go again. Jolly good. Okay, that comes back in there. Nice little brass plug cleaned up. This is what's nice about working on proper old cars. You've got nice fittings. And we've got a super slim I'm not sure what make that is. Uh, super slim, isn't it? The make super slim 316th Whitworth spanner. I'll just give that a little nip up. I'm going to go too berserk being brass. I can always nip it up afterwards if needs be, but you don't want to go too berserk. with a brass fitting that'll do I'll just give that a wipe just so in case it does weep I've got a chance of seeing them so that's back on I've cleaned inside the in the housing in here and that a clean so we should be able to start putting things back together fairly soon, which is always a nice feeling. 
Yeah, I just thought I'd tidy up the top of the oil filter housing a little bit. I didn't want to properly repaint it because that would stand out in the engine bay too much. But it was black originally, so I did the old trick of getting the tin of paint and a rag, spray on the rag and just wipe it in. And it just restores some of the blackness without it looking like a boiled sweet. So what I need to do now, what I thought I might do is just try rubbing over the lettering a little bit so that that will be visible under the bonnet. So I've got some very fine emery here. That should just highlight the lettering a little bit just to make it look smart without looking new because we don't want new looking do we? Well, I don't. Because the whole object of the exercise, as with the Morris 8, um, but with the Talbot as well, is just to try and preserve what we can of the original and where things have to be done replaced or repainted or whatever I try and do it that's in a way that's sympathetic to the rest of the car so this way I've just darkened it down a bit the original black paint is still in evidence but the rest of it's just darkened down enough just so that it doesn't look neglected and I'll just gently rub off the raised lettering a little bit that's where it says to calumet that should just look spot on in the engine bay of this 1937 car because like I say if you if the car's being fully restored then yeah repaint everything and make it look like new but when that's not happening it just looks a little bit out of place if you make something look too new and fresh when everything else doesn't look that way so this way it just looks cared for but still old which is just what we like so that is coming up quite nicely so I'll just finish off where it says to calm it I think that looks just about right so I can go back on the car now. All, all good. Right, that's the filter back in. And we will just tighten this up. Trusty spanner. Just this way. Proper tools. Something satisfying about using proper heavy old tools. too tight. I'll just nip this up without using the full length of the spanner. Hopefully that'll seal okay. If I need to nip it up I can do. At least it's nice and easy to spot. So if there is a leak it's not the end of the world. Should have put some oil in here actually. But I didn't, but I'll spin it over again before I have any attempt at starting it. Before I had to use the uh, ring key to get that off, so I've not gone as tight as it was. Hopefully that'll be okay. I'll just take this off here. before it was all rusty and horrible now it's looking a bit happier not shiny not new looking but just okay which is all I want to do at the moment because the rest of it is far from new looking 
so that's all right I'll just double check those connections and then I'll put the, uh, the sump plug back in and then I can start looking at putting some fresh oil straight in there Any shell, summer triple shell or winter double shell. Mustn't lose that. Some straight 30 weight to go in. Well, before making any attempt at starting it up, I need to lubricate the water pump the fan pulley and also the distributor. Uh, anything that will be spinning up to speed when the engine hopefully starts I want to make sure it doesn't run dry. So water pump, fan pulley, distributor, those are the next jobs to do I think. Right I've done the water pump. This brass fitting unscrews and you repack it full of water pump grease and refit it and just give it a turn. So that's that's done. The dynamo so a couple of drops of light oil in there. There should be a little cover on there. So I'll have to see if we can do something about that. Also put a drop of oil in the dizzy under the rotor. Under the rotor arm. That can go back on there. About five o'clock, I think. I've given that a quick clean up as well, just to make sure we've got a good chance of getting a spark out to the plugs. So I think for now that'll probably do on this side of the engine. I need to grease the fan assembly, there's a grease nipple on the other side there and then I'll have a, another look in the handbook just to see what else needs greasing before it can uh, before we can go for a test, test start so still a few jobs to do but we're getting there slowly I'm just continuing with the preparations on the Talbot I've uh, just greased the fan assembly um, I'll put a replacement grease nipple in here just so that I could fit my existing grease gun onto it the one that was there previously was this one which may or may not focus I don't know but anyway my grease gun wouldn't fit on there so I had a bit of a route through some spare supplies and managed to find one that fitted in there fortunately so that's in there now I'm able to grease that um, so I think the next thing to check for will just be check the spark make sure because obviously the leads are back on now I made all those up but I need to make sure that they still are capable of delivering the spark to the plug um, I need to check the points spin it over ignition on and just see if the sparks getting as far as the plugs and then I'll have to delve into the carburetor here which I've not I've not really done much with this type of carburetor before so that'll be exciting so we'll have to see what we can find out about that I'm not sure whether gaskets or overhaul kits are available for these or not so it'll be a bit of a voyage of discovery but I think next thing have a look at the spark and make sure that that side of things is working correctly I think Okay, inside the distributor, ignition's on. I'll just clean the points up in situ, i.e. there. So let's just see if we've got any spark. That looks promising. And that's with the original coil. So we've got a spark at the points. Next thing to do is turn the ignition off. Now we need to see if the spark is getting as far as the spark plugs. Now these leads are all new on the dizzy cap and the brush inside fell to pieces. Probably can't really see but in the inside the cap there's a centre bush on a little spring and that had all broken up so I had to pinch one off another dizzy cap cut it down and I'm hoping that I cut it down to the right length so that 
when the uh, rotor arm is on comes out it presses and it reaches there because obviously this the rotor arm transmits the spark to each of the six contacts inside the distributor cap and down to the plug so I need to see now if we're getting a spark as far as the plug so I'll put the cap back on put a little tester on the end of one of the plug leads and just see if we're getting a spark down at the uh, plug end right, well in theory I've uh, put this a makeshift spark plug tester on connected it to this lead at the back so if I put the ignition on and spin it over we should see a spark down here so let's give that a go ignition on fortunately the starter button's quite close let's have a look we'll find it got a spark at the plugs so that's quite promising I'll test a couple of the other plug leads out just to make sure that the leads are right but the signs are we're getting a spark all the way down to there which is important so that's uh, another box to tick so that's good well I think the ignition side of things is pretty much sorted now obviously the next thing to look at is the fuel system. This is a big old Zenith carburetor that's fitted on here. Um, now fortunately I noticed that it's very similar to a big old carburetor I bought a few years ago off eBay. Another big old Zenith for the comma truck. And there are a few detail differences but it's a very similar size so I'm hoping that if I need to catch any parts I can possibly take them off this or indeed possibly use this uh, new old stock carburetor in its entirety so there's a there are a few options there try not to short the battery out and there's a gasket set here as well which I picked up also for the comma a little while ago so there's a few gaskets there which may well fit here so I was in two minds as to whether to disturb the carburetor or not or just leave it well alone but I know that if I try and put fuel through it I, mean, I was going to bypass the fuel pump for the time being so I don't want it pulling up any muck from the uh, fuel tank but I just know that if I try and run this without having a look inside the carburetor first there's a good chance that there are going to be some block jets in there possibly the needle valve will be stuck or blocked up as well so at some point I think it would just bite me on the behind if I decided not to at least have a look inside and just see how clean it is in there because there could be 50, 60 year old fuel that's gone all stale and gummy and horrible inside there so I think if I've got any chance of getting this engine running at all this needs to come off and at least take the top of the float chamber off and just see what's going on inside like I say these gaskets should help out with that particular job so I think the next thing to do is disconnect all this carefully, take a few photographs of where everything goes, because we've got the linkage here, this is an automatic choke arrangement. So there isn't a choke lever as such inside the car, what you do is you put your foot all the way down on the accelerator and back off again before you try starting. That engages the choke and then I think there's a bimetallic strip inside here in the manifold that gradually releases the choke anyway so there's a few things to disconnect here linkages and so on so I think I will do that I'll disconnect what needs to be disconnected whiz off these two mounting bolts and have a look inside the carburetor and see what's going on in there uh, and once that's clean and straight inside I'll blow it through with some compressed air uh, I can rig up a temporary fuel feed into here and so long as I've still got a spark um, the signs are that it may well run. Uh, also I don't quite know how well it's going to run but the thing is just to get it running and see see where things are at on that particular score. So uh, yeah, let's go and take this off. So 
which I've just opened up the old uh, overhaul kit and there's a very handy exploded diagram here of the uh, Zenith carburetor uh, which I think is the same as on the car so I'm going to go and blow this up I'll scan it and blow it up to about A4 and that should be quite handy when it comes to taking this carburetor apart uh, it's a very chilly day today it's only just above freezing so I think I'll head back inside and go and warm up a bit and I'll take this inside and just go and make a, a copy or two of it. Okay. So that's where we're up to with the uh, rejuvenation of the uh, 37 Talbot uh, 3 litre. Um, it's tucked away in the garage nice and safe. Uh, I've gone through a few of the systems but obviously it's the fuel side that he's looking at now which will probably be the subject for a future video. So for now I think I'll say thanks for watching, please subscribe and like this video if you want to keep and follow the progress with this ancient vehicle and then we'll see what we get up to in the next video like i say hopefully the fuel system so thanks for watching cheers for now it's getting pretty wild out there so i think i'll wrap up for the day the observant viewers may have spotted a few or a couple of extra oil cans arriving on the scene one is this nice old enots not quite sure if this is focusing or not. That's quite a nice one. This isn't marked, but it has the military arrow on the side. Hopefully, hopefully the camera's picking that up. And that means it's military. Probably Second World War. So was that used in the army somewhere? Maybe in the RAF, Remi, something like that. There's some writing on the top, force something. And it still has the original brass filler on it, which is which is nice. So that's over there. And for the final new addition is this handsome fellow. Which appealed to me. It was the shape of it appealed to me. I hope this is focusing. And that is a Sutcliffe. It's quite a nice old girl. So that's so those are the new additions over there. This oil pour isn't new, this is usually hanging up, but I know a few people like these old tools, so I just thought I'd give them a quick mention. So we've got one or two old jacks around the place as well. But yeah, those are the new oil can additions, which I thought might just be worth having, having a quick look at for a minute. And uh, yeah, I think we'll nip inside now before this storm gathers any more excitement.